Hey guys, this week you're going to be creating an artwork called an agamograph. And an agamograph is a series of images that change at different angles. Um, Yakov Agam, who the, the artwork is credited for from, is an artist who was born in 1928. He's still alive at the age of 92, but he is known for his optical and his kinetic art. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're talking about a series of images that change at different angles. So we're actually going to take the paper. And when we put our artwork on it, if you go this way, you're going to see one image. And if you go this way, you're going to see another. So we are going to make an accordion out of one piece of paper. And then on this piece of paper, we are going to make sure we know our measurements. I have my ruler. And this is a 9 by 12 piece of paper. So I'm actually going to divide it into six. I want to make sure my line is straight, so I'm going to draw a line down, a line up here, and a line up here, so that way I can take my ruler and put it right here, up here at the top and at the bottom, and I can go straight down. So, we are going to make two images, but this image, this is going to be one image, this will be another, so they're not that different. You do want to make sure that your images go this way and not this way, okay? All right. So, to make the accordion, I'm going to set this aside. To make the accordion, you're going to take another piece of paper that's the same size. So, we're going to go 9 by 12. We're going to fold it in half. Make sure to, what I do is I put my finger at the top corner. And I want to make this crease. Alright, so that's in half. Then we're going to fold it in half again. Make sure... There we go. Hold on tight because the more paper you start pushing together or holding together, the more it can slide. So I want to make my, make sure I make my creases. Then I'm going to take my paper again. This time you want to make sure you hold on to it. Let's see if it'll be easier to go this way. We're actually going to fold it in half one more time. Yeah. All right. Hold on to it. Crease it. And if you notice, I'm like pinching it at different edges, so that way I know I have a firm grasp on it. Then I'm going to hold it down, I'm going to take my thumb, and I'm going to make sure I have my crease. So when I open it, I want to make sure I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight panels. Okay? Alright, now to make this an accordion, I want to take it, we're going to fold it, we're going to roll it this way. Take it, fold it this way, fold it backwards, and we're just going to keep flipping it and folding it so that way we know we have the accordion. Alright, here we go. So when I open it, you can see that it has the accordion look to it. Okay, alright, so there's my accordion, and we're going to come back to this in a second. Remember, pause the video if you need to, okay? All right, now, you can, and I'm actually going to go ahead and do this because I know me, I can get a little bit messy. So, if I start drawing over here or painting, which you're going to have the option, you can do watercolor or color pencil, but sometimes I get my materials on this side too. So, but you can leave it, create your two, two ideas, and then cut it in half, or you can cut it in half in advance. And don't accordion this. You want to wait till after you're done before you cut it. Okay. So on one image, I want to do a nighttime scene. And on the other image, I want to do a daytime scene. So it's really up to you. But try to think of doing two opposites. So maybe if your mind is going compositionally, you want to do something good and something dark, you can. Remember, stay in the realms of the classroom. But that's up to you. Okay. So something bright over here, something using dark colors over here. So simple would be, I'm going to create a daytime or a sunset landscape. And then over here, I'm going to create something with nighttime. Okay. So there we go. Now I may, I'll post another video that I found on YouTube that shows an example, but um, this is where um, mine's going to come into play. Maybe I want to do, I want to do some mountains, but I don't want to do the mountains that high. 
And I think I want to do on this one, I may want to do um, an ocean with the sunset reflecting on the ocean. I just really like making those for some reason. So, here we go. And then I might create like the beach. Here we go. Or a lake. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we know when we're doing watercolors, the first thing we need to do is wake up our colors. So let me get my watercolors woken up. Um, I'm out of yellow, so I brought a tra I have a traveling kit that I usually that I have, and I'm gonna borrow the yellow out of that one. I'm gonna go ahead and wake up all the colors because I'm gonna need all of them. And there's my yellow. I don't know if you can see it. it here it is, right here. It's my traveling. It's something I bought when I was in college. Um, I use it sometimes, not a whole lot. I actually like the the watercolors that we use in class from uh, the Crayola set better. That's just my preference. All right, let's see. All right, I want to start with the background. So I kind of want to go with some yellow. So basically, if you can think about your two sides, where I said like one being bright colors, one being dark colors, uh, in my thinking is I want to use warm colors on one side and then something with cool colors on the other, which is where I was thinking we could do like a uh, daytime and then a nighttime, or you can do uh, something that shows happiness and then something that shows maybe strong feelings. It's up to you. I like to do my skies and washes. All right, and then when I do water, I like to make sure that my colors reflect, especially if I do the sunset, because it's always, so I'm just gonna kind of skip around. Um, I don't want it to be completely strong because I am gonna add in a little bit of blue. So I am gonna wait for this to, the water to dry before I add in too much more. Make sure you have napkins on hand. Make sure that you have a ruler, scissors, pencil, all that good stuff on hand. Um, one of the reasons why I chose to do a beach scene is because I've had students that have said, you know, hey, I don't know, really know what to do for sand if I chose to do a beach. Uh, so I kind of want to show you. So we're going to take some brown some yellow. I just want to use that to lighten my yellow. I'm going to take a scrap piece of watercolor paper. I want to test out my colors that I want real quick. So I don't want that. That looks like it's got blue in it. So I probably may not have rinsed my brush out all the way. All right, that's too yellow. There we go. There we go, I kinda like that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit extra yellow. All right. Maybe. Mm Still not. Should have just went with that one. I like that one <laughs> a lot better. There we go. We're getting there. All right, let me add just a more brown tinge. There we go. We'll use that. I like that. Okay. And I kind of want to go light with it because it's up close. So um, there we go. Slide this back. And the reason why I want to go light is because I'm actually going to go back in with some more and just make layers or shadows in the sand. And then, and right now it just looks like I painted shapes. So I want my water to just kind of overlap a little bit. All right. 
make some blue for the water. Alright. I'm just gonna kind of skip it. Yeah, we'll say it's a lake because I'm not really making waves. And I want to make this blue overlap this line. And then where I made those strong lines, I'm actually going to take my brush, dip it in water, rinse it off, dab it on my paper towel, and then just kind of spread it around. So that way the lines don't look real strong. And then because this is a sunset, this right here in the back is going to be dark. So I'm going to come in with some brown and add just a little bit of black. And we do want this to reflect too. So I'm going to go ahead and reflect it while the water is wet. Because I want it to be subtle. This is why you need to pick a towel at hand. Sometimes you need to kind of just fix some things. Alright, and then I want to come in. So make sure whatever you choose to do is a composition for each one. All right, so there's that one. All right, and I'm gonna set this one to the side and let it dry. Make sure you lay it flat. Now, you remember again, you can use color pencils or you can use watercolor on this. So if you're tired of um, watercolor, you can use color pencil. All right, so. I'm gonna put that over. And it's okay. This right here, I'm gonna paint over it, so it shouldn't be a problem. All right. Um, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do water too, since I did water on the other one. This, one, I'm gonna do higher mountains on this one. So I want to make it more nighttime. Um, let's see. There we go. Kind of like that. So I'm gonna do a river, darker colors. Um, yeah. All right. Start with my sky. So I'm going to go black with some blue. Might add a little bit of purple. Oh, yeah. Purple would look really pretty. Kind of blend that down. Add a little bit of water. Remember when you're painting with watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the color. The less water you add, so the more paint you use, the darker the color. So if you, especially if you're wanting to do like a blend or an ombre, you really want to make sure that you're using the idea of, and I may paint, splatter some stars on this. There we go, yeah, I like that. Especially with the purple being in the corner. Okay. So, and the cool part is with this, um, I don't necessarily have to make the reflection because the water's gonna be dark to begin with, but 
uh, making sure that you have that gradient from where it goes dark to light and not just solid. So even when you're using color pencil, you want to make sure that you're showing values with either your darker colors to your light colors. All right, so on this one, I want brown mountains, but I want to add a little bit of green to them. There we go, because they're darker in the back. And then as we get up close, the green's going to get just a little bit lighter. And this mountain is further back, so I want this one to be just a little bit darker. And then with my landscape being this being further back, I still want that green to be dark. So looks like I might need to change it just a little bit. There we go. Because I don't want my green blending in with my mountain, if that makes sense. So I just want to use dark green. some up here because this is too light. Alright. And then I'm gonna go back to my blue. I want it to be darker. So I'm gonna put just a tid bit of purple in it. There we go. But you don't even see those dots that were on this piece in the beginning. All right, so we want to wait for both of these to dry. All right, and so if I put them side by side, I didn't really mean to make that happen. The, the horizontal lines match and the mountains match on that side. But if I take my piece of paper that I made the accordion fold on and stretch it out, it's the same size, okay? So when this dries, we're gonna come back to it and we're gonna cut it and we're going to cut an inch and a half measurement. So if we take the fold, the fold that we made, and we put it on there, we have an inch and a half, okay? So also make sure that we have glue on hand, and um, liquid glue is fine too. Glue stick should be fine. We will find out, all right? All right, so we're going to let you dry, and I'll be back in just a little bit. Let me slide. There we go. Hey guys, okay, so the artwork is dry and I went ahead and drew out the lines, but I'm gonna redraw them out to show you. But you are going to be dividing these into four sections. All right, so I'm gonna move these over. All right, so the way I have this set is when you cut it in half, you're cutting a nine by 12 and a half, so then you're having a six by nine. So we're gonna put a measure line at one and a half, three, four and a half, six. All right. Slide your ruler down. This is what we call measure lines. One and a half, three, four and a half, six. And then you take your ruler and make sure you use the zero of the ruler. So make sure that the ruler is on the zero when you measure out. Okay. And then that way you know that when you slide down, you're on the zero. 
and you have it matching. All right. All right. So then you take your ruler and you're going to go put it on this measuring mark to this measure mark, draw a straight line. And then you're going to do the same thing with each one. And that way you have your line straight. Please do not put your measure marks at the top and then think I'm going to draw a straight line and it's crooked. Okay. You want measuring marks at the top and the bottom. So that way you know that you're making a straight line. All right. Then you're going to take each one of these. You're going to flip your paper over on the back. And on this one, I put the measuring lines on the front. I'd probably recommend you put them on the back. That's just something I did. But you're going to mark your first one, A1, A2, A3, A4. So then the second one is going to be measured B1, B2, B3, B4. So you know. And this one, I put the lines on the back, okay, after I realized I should probably put the lines on the, on the back. Okay, so as long as you're a precise cutter, though, it should be fine as long as you have them labeled, okay? And the cool part is, is now that they're labeled, I can actually take this, flip it over, and it all makes sense. <clears throat> so, there we go. All right, so we're going to take this. Cut it into strips. Make sure you're staying on the line, especially if you're like me and you drew the you drew the line on the front instead of the back. <laughs> I'm actually gonna try to make sure I'm as careful as I can be so they're not seen that much and it's okay if your lines are not cut perfect all right all right so there's that one and I have this one all right now that we have our eight strips and our two different compositions we're actually going to take them you want to make sure that they're labeled right a1 a2 a3 a4 and then your second one b1 B2, B3, B4, okay? So we're gonna take those aside, move them over. <clears throat> we're gonna take our accordion paper. Remember, it's one and a half inches. So I'm actually just gonna flip this over. And we're gonna go A, B, but we're gonna go A1, B1, oops, A2, B2, A3, B, three, A, four, and then B, four, all right? So, starting with A, one, we're gonna take our glue, we we'll try this with glue stick, and if this don't work, we'll use liquid. And re again, remember, your cuts don't have to be perfect, okay? Um, I mean, you wanna get the best that you can, so I'm gonna glue this down, that's, a1, glue in A1, so now I'm putting the puzzle together. So that's A1. And now I'll look for B1. Which is right here. So B1, I want right here. Okay, now I want A2. All right, there's A2, and I'm also gonna go ahead and look for B2. So that's A2, B2. And then I want A3. And then I want B3. All right, and then my two last ones is A4. Yeah, see, I'm 
my cutting was not was not precise. But we'll see what it looks like when we get through. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place down A4 and B4. There we go. All right, so now if I take it, I'm gonna fold it back accordion. Might have to make sure to recrease some of your folds because of the glue. Here we go. I'll let that one hang around. All right. So there it is. And I'm actually going to take this and glue it onto another piece of paper. So what it's going to do is when you look at it this way, see if you can, yeah, you should be able to see it. And then you see one painting. And then if I turn it this way, you're going to see another. So, and that's what we call the effect. Okay. All right. So, um, I'll show you a picture in just a second of it glued and dried and stuff. So, but there you go. And make sure if you need help, let me know. All right. So, you're going to have two images on your paper. One using warm colors, one using cool colors. So, you can do a, something with a day scene and then something with a night scene. Um, and I was going to splash some white paint on this and I forgot. But I like it just like that too. So, it's fine. So, anyways. So make sure that you have opposite on one side and the opposite of that on the other side. And then we just have at it. All right. Yay. All right. So what I did here is I took it, I folded it back and then I just glued these edges and I took another piece of paper about the same size and I'm just going to pull out the accordion just enough and I'm going to let it sit there and let it draw. There we go. All right. And that's what it's gonna look like. I think it's probably too soon to, to lift it up and show you. <clears throat> so we're just gonna let that draw. All right, here it is, the uh, final, it's glued down. And as you can see when you, so if it were in the, on the wall, if you walk by it, you'd see one side and then you can see another. All right. All right, so have fun. Um, remember, if you need help, let me know, okay?